I'm Vic, and welcome to Geekophile, where we do things differently. Yes, today, for a change, I'm going to make a clot of myself. We are going to make the famous British clotted cream, delicacy of the south of England, and an essential component of the British high tea with scones and strawberry jam. Now, it's quite easy to make, but very hard to find here in New Zealand, which is why I discovered it was easy to make. Um, clotted cream is a thickened cream uh, that's thickened by heating, and it's got more than 55% of uh, butter fat in it. We're starting off with this anchor cream, which is about 36 and a bit percent butter fat. Use a litre or kilo of this, you're going to get, um, you know, roughly a third of a kilo of uh, clotted cream out of it. So, the complicated process for creating clotted cream is to take your cream and pour it into a shallow bowl. Thus, there is no precise measurement here. That's enough. Leaves a bit for some coffee later on. Uh, this cream, by the way, is uh, getting very close to its prime, but this process will extend its life by a few days. All right, so now we will take this cream over to here and we will put it in the fan oven set to a mere 75 degrees Celsius. Some of you may be able to use the warming function on your oven. Fan ovens are better, um, more even heat distribution. But really, the point is to keep a very constant temperature um, overnight or, well, throughout the day. Twelve hours later. During that time, I have managed to burn my arm on the barbecue, which is why I'm cuddling this bottle of cold water. But it is now time to remove the cream from the oven, which I will try and do without burning myself. Yeah. And we will put, there it is, and we will put this over here to cool down for a bit because we're going to cover it in the fridge and we don't want condensation on the lid. Meanwhile, though, we have to put something over the top like that. Why, I hear you ask? Twelve hours later. Now the prep work before we drag it out of the fridge. We have some tasty date scones here to put clotted cream on. Um, we have a bowl to catch the stuff that we drain off. We have a wide bowl to drop the whole clotted cream into. And there's dinner and a knife which I will hopefully be able to drag the top off with. Uh, okay, let's go get the clotted cream. Don't want to shake it up too much. Alright, now we'll loosen the edges up. We've got two approaches here. Uh, we can try and lift the stuff off the top, which is, I believe, the traditional way of doing it. Um, or we can poke a hole and drain it out from underneath. Uh, which is what I do if I stuff it up. All right, so now all the fat has risen and um, it's given this wonderful yellow appearance. Apparently, New Zealand customers won't buy cream with yellow bits on top, so they throw that bit away, which is the whole point. So, um, New Zealand clotted cream, rubbish. All right, now trying not to sink it too much, we lift the clotted cream out and put it in a dish. Opinion is divided as to how much liquid you want on the bottom of it. Where the heck did I put the knife? There we go. How much liquid you want on the bottom. It makes it sticky, yeah, but I don't like clotted cream that wanders off the top of my scone. There we go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the whole complicated process of making clotted cream. Oh yeah, we better um, do the chef thing and taste it. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Let it cream. The liquid that's left over is actually uncultured buttermilk, and you can use that to make the next batch of scones, or batters, or even buttermilk chicken. So we'll keep that. And there is the finished result. Very versatile stuff. You can be stuck in your scones, plunked on your pudding, make ice cream with it, um, and even butter. Anyway. Enough talking. Now, that's your lot. Down on Geeko Farm. Oh yeah. No cat, you can't have any.